Hello guys. Hello guys. And girls and non-binary. How quickly did I regret my trades yesterday? Um, I don't know. I got stopped out like in, in, in an hour or something. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I just had to get it over. You know, I get this itch. I just had to trade something. I'm such a degenerate. I saw something on Twitter. I can't find it right now. I saw something on my feet that the AAII sentiment indicator is the most bearish like ever, pretty much. Is that true? I'm trying to find, I saw it like a few hours ago. I didn't pay much. Oh, here it is, wait, wait. Macro charge tweeted it. Bottom 1%. 1.7% in history. Bull bed, bear spread. Interesting. Doesn't really mean much, but it's just interesting. <clears throat> I, I, I personally, <coughs> I really hope we get one more leg down. But it's kind of interesting, you know, we, we have, you know, this wasn't even a big correction, you know, less than 12% in the S&P 500. And the sentiment indicators are pretty much where they were at in 2008 and in March 2020. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's bullish or if it's bearish or I don't know what it means, but... Just interesting. All right, the casino is open, guys. Make your bets. Remember, you don't have to make a bet. That's the best part. No one is forcing you to make a bet. If you don't see an edge, you don't have to make a bet.
STX. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I guess reported earnings. Um, yeah, could be. It had an EP here too back in October. Had a great follow through. I haven't checked the news on this, so well, I guess it's earnings. <clears throat> Man, <coughs> it's boring being patient. It really is. Super boring. Boring is good. I hate boring. <laughs> no, it's it's actually well it depends. TCDA. Oh, I don't see anything here. It lo just looks like a random stock having a random up here. I don't see a setup here. <clears throat> All good things come those who wait. Depends on the context. In trading, yes. In real life, not necessarily.
<coughs> I sound older. Yeah, because as I have uh, throat issues. I've had it for like a week. I just cough. That's why I sound older. <laughs> no, I had a birthday. Yeah, that's that's why. <laughs> I've been throating. I've been deep throating. It's not what you think. <laughs> you fucking perverts. It's not what you think. <clears throat> what motivated me when I first started trading? Yes, freedom. Freedom from having to go to work, you know. Go to go to you know have a boss. That was the main thing. You know, back when I, actually when I started trading, I didn't even think it was possible to make more than like, let's say a few hundred thousand per year. Now I can have like a few hundred thousand in slippage on one trade. So it primarily it was, you know, making some decent amount of money and mainly was the freedom aspect of it. I really didn't feel like going to work and be someone else's bitch all day. That was really the main thing. I don't really work well in a higher, I don't know what to say, hierarchical, or high, high, what's the high, hierarchy, hierarchical organization or whatever it's called. <coughs> I really don't do well. I really don't like to be told what to do. So that was always something that was the driving force in the beginning. Heretical, yeah, chain of command, yeah, bureaucracy. <coughs> Hier hierarchical, I really don't know how to pronounce the word. Hierarchical, yeah. fucking word. I don't even like the word. I don't like the meaning of the word and I don't like the word. Stupid word. <laughs> Higher arc equal. <coughs> Eichel? Harry uncle? Yeah, Harry uncle. Exactly. Let's just call it Harry uncle. <laughs> Higher arc kk. <laughs> You guys are hilarious. Arc, yeah, all in. <coughs> <coughs> Man, remember guys when I shorted Arc on the bear flag breakdown? And then I covered two days later? Good times. <laughs> uh, th that has to be the biggest fuck up so far. Covering Palantir and Ark after two days. I, I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I wasn't. I didn't follow my rules. Like a... S oh, well. <clears throat> but it's kind of nice sitting all cash too, because you kind of start... Yeah, it's like a blank canvas. Sometimes having <coughs> a lot of positions can be stressful. Kate was on casting couch. <laughs> the 
my account gets reset to zero, is it still a blank canvas? <sighs> yeah, you could call it a blank canvas. But I think that canvas is a little bit more blank than mine. <coughs> exactly, it's more like an imaginary canvas. <sighs> yeah, the Zim. Super strong. Oh yeah, Ackman bought shares of Netflix, right? Hard to find any good setups. <clears throat> mm. Just don't see anything to do here. Time for struggling trader. I don't think right now is a good thing to do a struggling trader because like if you are a swing trader on the long side, like the past couple of months haven't really been uh, great. I think it's better to do a struggling trader after a good period because if you're still struggling after a couple of good months, you know, you have, you know, there's a problem there, right? <clears throat> Can you please not burp? I don't burp into the mic. If I'm looking for <coughs> long term investments. No. My <coughs> What's my take on physical uranium? What's it called? U dot U? Oh, physical uranium. 
Yeah, I'd like to have a delivery to my door. Why, why? Oh, here's the longer term chart. I mean, it looks like it's flagging ish. It's very wide and loose, but. A winning trader segment. Uh, I don't know what that means. The best long setup in history. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There were a lot of uh, best long setups in history in 2020. I mean, I, I guess it should would be like Tesla. There were several best long setups in history on this thing back in 2020. Uh, and you know, the fact it was like a mega liquid stock, like the most liquid stock ever, you could do like unlimited size. I mean, there were like four breakouts I traded most of these like this one this one this one and <coughs> this one I traded all I, I traded I think I traded all four of them and I underestimated all four of them <laughs> and I did too little size on all four of them but you know there was like unlimited money and also this one few months ago I uh, the funny thing is I had it I think I bought it here I got stopped out here and then I never re bought it and you know look at the move it made those were like the best breakouts in history <laughs> yeah mRNA I, yeah mRNA uh, not in 2020 but in 2021 that one I was long this one I had again too little size and I sold it way too early. I didn't follow my sell rules. This thing literally went up 110% in like three weeks from the breakout. BNPX2. This one I didn't have. This one too, once it broke together with mRNA. This is from 2021. But mRNA, you know, this was also high priced, very liquid stock. <coughs> And do a lot of size and the thing is you only need a few per year you really don't need 50 or 100 or 500 trades per year like you only need a few good trades per year if you size correctly right I'm not saying go all in but I would say my max size on individual stocks is like say 20 25 percent you know you just need a few of them you don't need too many and you're gonna have very good returns obviously you're not gonna you're gonna trade other stuff too but a few big winners can really make a huge difference
Oh yeah, definitely. The Pareto rule is very real in trading. I would say 95% of my profits come from 5% of my trades. But it depends on what type of trader you are. If you're like a more of a day trader, it's probably gonna be like 80-20. But if you're like a swing trader, or position trader, you know, it's gonna be like 595 or something. And if you're a scalper, it's probably gonna be maybe 60 40 or whatever. A fake color Maggie followed you on Twitter last night. <coughs> you can you can DM him about crypto. And also ask about the thumb method. Exactly. Ask them to send one Bitcoin and then you can send two back. You can promise to send two back. Oh well, there's nothing going on. Thanks for joining. See you tomorrow.